as you see, the weather was not auspicious for the start of my Worldcon trip, so let's start here instead. The weekend prior to Worldcon was spent in good old Austin, where the illustrious Armadillocon crew hosted its 39th year. Armadillocon is a venerable literary SFF convention run on a cozy, modest scale, attended by not only its regulars and fandom, but a growing clique of writers who have come to love it for its focus on writers, though there is a lot of good programming on films, podcasting, and other fandoms. It has a writer's workshop that has helped launch more than a few careers, and if I'm not careful, it's the kind of place where I can easily violate my I don't actually need to buy books rule. I made sure to fortify myself, as this year they kept me quite busy, with a whopping five panels on such topics as Arthur C. Clarke, dystopias versus post-apocalypse, and science fiction in the Anthropocene. Past guests of honor have included everyone from William Gibson to Ken Liu, and this year hosted Nisi Shawl plus special guest Tamora Pierce, whom you see here with one of the biggest autograph lines the convention has ever had. It's also a fun place to see old friends and troll them with my camera. <laughs> and these are my buddies, Steena and Marshall. Hello, all the people. Yeah. Oh my god, this is like really gonna go in the thing. Really gonna go in the thing. Oh my goodness. Well, yes. All the people in Internet Landia. The fantabulous and you, light. Yes, and. The new book Blackthorn is coming out just next week. Yes, indeed. I paid him to say that. So if you're ever in Austin at the beginning of August, this is definitely one to check off your bucket list, and it was a fine lead-in to the big trip overseas. Which began the very next morning after a mere three hours of sleep. The bad weather had me briefly terrified we'd be taking off late, jeopardizing my connecting flight on thin air, but the heroes at American Airlines declared we were on time, and sure enough, right on the dot I was aloft and above the storm, flying through billowing clouds and blue skies to Chicago O'Hare. Terminal 5 is for international flights in Chicago, and once I was comfortably on the ground, I did a brief bit of exploring through the duty-free shops in case there was anything other than half-gallon bottles of Jack Daniels and perfume to bring my booktuber friends. Nothing caught my eye, or wallet, thank God, so after doing a bit of recon to find my gate, I whiled away some time in the Air France lounge, which Finnair Business Class flyers get to use, and which gives you a lovely view of the tarmac under a setting sun, and all the free cognac and whiskey and finger foods you can eat. You know, I think I could get used to this, though it's probably better for my general ability to live that trips like these will happen once every two years at most. Still, I figured if I was going to vacation, I was going to vacation all the way. Thank you so much. Thank you. Great bite. Uh -huh. When I was a little boy, my family traveled extensively, but it's been ages since I've been overseas. Now, I usually say that the part I like about travel isn't the travel, it's the being other places part of travel. And since I knew I would be utterly useless, if I got to Finland having spent nine hours wedged into a two-foot-wide coach seat with someone's mutant baby screaming in my ear the whole trip, I adopted the treat-yourself philosophy. I wanted to be able to do plenty of reading, sleeping, and eating food made out of food. I'm happy to report I got my money's worth. The Finnair flight crew was extremely friendly. They don't have you randomly assaulted the way U.S. flight crews sometimes do. It was a real novelty to experience actual legroom, and in addition to having champagne served to me within minutes of sitting down, they give you a cute little amenity kit. First up, we have an itty-bitty toothbrush and toothpaste, which is the greatest thing ever when you're in a situation where you need them and don't usually have them. Next up, a sleep mask. Ah, you and I are going to be good friends. Next, some things I was less likely to use, like shea butter, but that's the thought that counts. Foam earplugs are also great, but I also had my own earbuds to drown out noise with an ambient playlist. Finally, slippers. Maybe not my pattern, but again, for being able to move about the cabin with your shoes off, they were a terrific perk. And the dinner and wine menus offered some nice choices. I tried the port, and it was really pretty nice. Finally, at 10 p.m. Chicago time, we lifted off, soaring over the glistening city lights to the sight of a bright moon shimmering on the surface of Lake Michigan. Helsinki being eight hours ahead, I was traveling into the future.
I woke up after a very restful five hours or so of sleep. There was a huge breakfast involving an omelette, stewed mushrooms, lots of fruit, God knows what else. I swear I ate and drank more on that plane than I customarily do within a 72-hour period. Landing was perfect, and I was minutes into the airport when I met my first booktuber, Denise Harwood, in the passport line. No video for that. I lost her again almost immediately, but hey, I was finally in frickin' Helsinki. Apparently, I missed a rainy Monday. When I got there, the weather was gorgeous. After getting off the train and away from some new construction happening at Pasilla Station, I made it to my hotel, the original Socos Pasilla, nestled in a quiet and pretty little area with lots of greenery. I checked in, got my luggage all settled, took a quick shower, then hopped the train for a booktuber dinner meetup just outside Helsinki Central Station, underneath the glowering statues who looked like escapees from Ridley Scott's Prometheus. Hi. Yes! Hi! So we're waiting for Brie? Yeah, we're okay. we'll waiting for Brie. Alright. Where is she? <laughs> so where have you guys been like today? Like, where we have been to the donut place, <laughs> which is priority one. <laughs> um, we've walked, sort of walked all around Helsinki today, haven't we? Like the town centre. Did you go to the fortress? To... No, we didn't go. We, we went up a tower. We the Thorny to the yeah. sites. View tower, panorama view yeah. tower. And then wandered through some parks, and then went to the theme park, had a burrito. We've done it all. <laughs> Brie finally turned up, fashionably late. We made our first stop at this awesome comics and game shop, which got everyone excited. <laughs> okay, okay. We have the comic shop, which Maya promised, and now we are here, and she's looking at us like we're crazy. The part I love the most about meeting booktube friends IRL for the very first time is just how naturally you find yourself slotting into sociability, as if you've hung out for years. Of course, we have, in virtual space, but that's just real life with cameras. <laughs> just like creeping on us all over there. <laughs> this is what happens when booktubers get together. Yeah. The cameras come out. Bouncing between common sense and the hypnotic desire to play every single game in the store was becoming a challenge, but we eventually made our way back into the world. I gotta say, Maya and Rhea were absolute tour guiding champions. That one with the musical instrument yeah. is Vainamoinen. Okay. He is the Finnish national hero from our epic Kalevo. And on the other side is Ilmarinen, who is the person who basically molded the world. Okay. The naked smith. Yes. Yeah, it seems a little bit of a dangerous thing to a do. I would think dangerous. that would, yeah, there's <laughs> certainly hazard presented in... It's a popular meeting place, like, yeah. let's meet at this place. We also got taken to a plague park, which is just a park, except with monuments to plague victims and apparently a real plague pit underneath. And we had dinner at a Viking restaurant, where Caitlin robbed us of our dignity by demanding we wear the helmets. You can see that in her video. One hard lesson I learned? Buy a power brick. My battery died often before I could record some wonderful hanging out moments, like our trip to the steampunk bar and our random Robin Hobb train encounter. But I won't soon forget the good times. So what about this convention I went over there for in the first place? Well, bright and early Wednesday morning, still a bit jet-lagged, I made the 15-minute walk over to the Mesukeskus Convention Center to pick up my registration. The Convention Center is a spacious, modern facility for the most part, and the Worldcon staff seemed to have everything flowing as smoothly as possible. Caitlin and the rest of the gang had gotten there even before I had, and were delighted that they were in and out of the line within five minutes. Though believe me, these lines would get quite a bit longer over the rest of the day, and a number of locals became fairly frustrated later on in the week when the day passes started selling out faster than they could get them. In all, it's estimated about 7,000 warm bodies were present, with a higher than expected American turnout. I was happy to see that the line for program participants was super short, so I grabbed my badge and my goodie bag quickly, got my schedule, and then went on a Pokemon hunt for more booktubers. Aha! Here's one now! Hi. Hi. There she is. Oh, Elizabeth! Oh, you've got the movie. I do, yes. I'm very nerdy. Oh, it's so fun. 
Elizabeth and I grabbed a quick coffee, but after that we didn't see much of her for the next day or so, as she had volunteered to help organize signing lines. She may have regretted that. Anyway, a quick note about the dealer's room. I suppose I'm not sure what I was expecting, but I was a bit disappointed that only one vendor had English language books in UK editions, as I was looking for a few of those. Though I admit it was quite cool to be exposed to so much Finnish SFF, both works translated from English and original works that have yet to be translated into English. I've been hoping some UK publishers might have a presence in the dealer's room, but I suspect there were complicated customs and tax laws making that sort of thing just too prohibitively expensive. There were tons of tables in an adjacent hall where some of the international fan groups were well represented, whether they were in the running for future world cons or not. I was especially taken with the Chinese contingent, and one of my favorite panels of the entire con was about the current state of Chinese SF, the new generation and post-new generation of emerging writers, and the industry that supports them. The rising, uh, the rise of the new generation, uh, the writers in the 1990s, and uh, what is the new generation? They are a group of new writers. Uh, they started to publish stories in science fiction world, and uh, they gradually create their own conventions, styles, and uh, centers, and actually their own fandom. Given China's population, they still feel there's a long way to go. It must be interesting to be like Lu Xujian, with over 700,000 sales of the three-body problem still feeling there just aren't enough people aware of your genre. Now is as good a time as any to talk about the panels. The programming, to put it simply, was amazing, with literally too much stuff to see. Predictably, for the first day, logistics were a nightmare. The con underestimated the necessary space, meaning queues were massive and quite often took the form of, well, crowds and many upset folks found themselves unable to get into desired events. To their credit, the ConCom moved fast on this, and by day three, medium halls were swapped out for large ones, and large halls swapped out for giant ones. I won't include extended clips of the panels I saw, because frankly, holding a gimbal gets tiring after a while, and there is also a Worldcon 75 channel, where you can watch many complete panel events yourself. But the specificity of topics was mind-blowing. There were panels on every manner of representation under the sun. There was a delightfully silly Tea and Jeopardy live show with George R.R. R. Martin. I saw a panel on Finnish horror, immediately followed by another one on Nordic horror. I saw Robin Hobb on a panel about animals in fantasy. As you might have guessed, it is shockingly easy to overstress yourself. By day three of the con, my tender little feet had been destroyed by blisters, Caitlin had come down with con crud and passed it on to Claire, although Bree's heroic immune system managed to keep her safe. I just stopped hugging people after a while, which I think everyone appreciated, because if there's one thing about Americans that's deeply weird over there, it's our fondness for hugs. Still, one thing that kept us all feeling good was indulging in Finnish candy. I mean, they've got a good biscuit selection, so I'm, I'm not complaining about that. I think these ones look pretty good. They all seem to have girls' names. But this one is Daniela, Elise, Doris. Oh. <laughs> I'm not a uh, Marianne. Is this a thing? Yeah. Oh. And, and and this is the ballerina cookie. Yeah. If you need to stay on your toes. <laughs> I might get these ones in the hope they're good. Because I'd like to try some. Actually, I need to get some for work as well. I will do that. I'll get these for Now, I then go on to talk about what I read this month and say whether I enjoyed it or not. I do have to mention those of us from Booktube SFF who were representing on panels. Claire Rousseau appeared with my buddy Joel Corna on a panel titled Beyond the Book Review. And if you'll permit me a moment of self-indulgence, my 10 a.m. Sunday panel on book blogging with Teresa Nielsen Hayden, Cora Bullert, and Sean Duke from Skiffy and Fanti was more well attended than I was expecting. And I really got to pitch Booktube to an audience still largely unaware of it, but apparently quite interested. Uh, this is, I think, mainly from, the, from YouTube who are on YouTube. What are the differences and the challenges going from writing to being 
talking live on uh, YouTube and how much, live. I mean, do you have no. to, has it, did you start off having to edit a lot and now it's become freer or we can talk about that a little bit. Right, well, I suppose that, uh, yes, there is a, there's a technical learning curve if you decide to go into video making. So you want at least to make perhaps a rudimentary understanding of how to record, how to shoot things so that you know they're visible, um, how to edit a video at least in a basic way, you know to clip your mistakes. With the prevalence of things like iMovie and the basic editing thing, I mean on a, you can record and edit videos on your phone. I think people are just becoming aware of that technology, and so it, you, different booktube channels do things at different technical levels too. I mean some people are very very much into. And making a production out of it, music titles, what have you. They really enjoy putting that work into it. Other people just turn on the webcams and record and when they start talking and when they're done having things to say, they stop and then they post it. And that works fine too. Um, but everyone, again, the, the uniqueness of the personality and the individual approach to doing a channel is what gives a channel its appeal. You know, not everyone will do the thing the same way. But enough about me. How about those Hugo Awards? Been translated for English publication in Clark's world. Really happy with the Hugos tonight. Really happy. Sorry if I disappoint, but I didn't shoot much of them as I was sitting in the nosebleed seats and couldn't get good angles. And besides, I was expecting there to be a live stream you all would have watched by now. But that was wrecked by technical issues. I'll just say it was an amazing night, and I especially loved how some international awards, like the Seiyun Award from Japan, were allowed to present as well during the ceremony, keeping with the truly global flavor of an international world con. The world of science fiction and fantasy truly is a world, and no single tiny clique can lay any kind of exclusive claim to it. Awards night wrapped up with some fairly relaxed partying, except for Claire, who got to be somebody's plus one for the Hugo Losers party held at the damn steampunk bar. By the time it was all over, it felt like the week had flown by. And I already miss everyone terribly. But never fear, I'll see you at the next one. And of course, right here on BookTube. Wow, the, it's over. Worldcon is over. It just doesn't quite seem real yet, but it's a bit over. It was fantastic. And I want to thank all of you guys for joining me in this video. Oh, hi. It's, look, it's Caitlin. I'm still here. Uh, she's still. <laughs> but we're leaving together-ish, or same time-ish. Yeah. One of the two, anyway. But, uh, all right. So I want to thank all of you for joining me. And until I see you next time, happy reading.